Welcome to DAU's AI video learning series. This video will introduce you to DOD's ethical principles in responsible AI. We'll look at this DOD guidance on responsible AI and take a look at the ethical principles and how they relate to responsible AI. And of course, for further reading, you can click on this link here, or if for whatever reason this link doesn't work, you can find the link in the comments below. We'll look at this DOD guidance on responsible AI and look into the five AI DOD ethical principles. These five principles were first recommended by the DIB and they were later adopted by DOD and we'll briefly look at each and discuss them. So the first principle is the responsible principle. And this is primarily has to do with the humans that are using the technology. It's to ensure that the, the people are using the appropriate level of judgment, development, deployment, use of the capability. Uh, they under, understand AI, they understand how it was developed, they understand its weaknesses and its strengths. Uh, is AI the right tool for the job? And if they deem it to be the right tool for the job, are they ensuring it can be used uh, safely and that it functions the way it was intended to function? And it also means those humans are going to be held accountable for the way AI is developed and the way AI is, AI is used. So that takes us to the principle of the equitable principle, principle of equitability. And this has to do with minimizing any unintended bias in the capabilities. And this is mostly uh, comes into play when you're dealing with AI systems that make decisions about people or, or deal with people, personnel matters, things like that, and bias those outcomes. Uh, now, the data that you use to train these systems is of major importance. If there's if there's bias in the data, then the bias is, is very much likely going to show up in the in the performance of the system. So, if we build an AI enhanced system, let's say to to screen resumes for people to interview to build the next AI ready workforce, uh, and we want it to uh, you know, we use the current DOD workforce's data uh, to, to train the system, then it's obviously going to be trained toward uh, older folks like me, um, retired military, or, you know, because we, everybody knows we have an aging D, uh, defense acquisition workforce. Instead of finding the, the young Python programmers and the TensorFlow with care framework uh, experts that we really wanted to find. So, so we've got to watch out for unintended bias and train it on the data so that it has the performance that we want it to have. Okay, and then there's the principle of traceability or the traceable principle. This is to ensure that multiple levels of stakeholders involved have the appropriate level of understanding and insight into that technology. They understand how the system was developed, how it operates, how it makes decisions, and that it provides a basic level of transparency into that technology. So also while there's different requirements for different systems, uh, the bottom line, it, it, you know, it ensures that the data sources, the capabilities, the uh, the systems have a certain level of auditability and understandability. And then there's the reliable principle. The AI should be dependable. It should work the way it was designed to work. This means that it works correctly, consistently, predictable in, in predictable ways. That we have clearly defined use cases and we've tested it uh, in those use cases and that it works safely and securely. When the warfighter uses the AI, AI enhanced system and they turn to it, they're confident that system's gonna work. They trust that it won't malfunction or cause any unintended harm. Then there's the governable principle, the principle of governability. This has to do with minimizing any unintended consequences. Uh, the warfighter needs to be able to notice any abnormal behavior in the system, be able to disengage that technology. If the AI system starts behaving unexpectedly or in undesirable ways, uh, we've got to be able to change its actions or use alternative means to get the mission done. Simply put, you know, we've got to ensure that we can turn the system off. So these principles emphasize that DOD's AI systems should be used wisely, treat everyone fairly, be transparent and understandable, work reliably, and always remain under human control. All right, so these principles, uh, they build on a long foundation of uh, existing um, uh, values in, in our country here. You know, we've got Title 10 of U.S. Code, we've got privacy and civil liberties, you know, we've got those types of democratic values as well as international norms. So it's not like we just pull them out of the blue, but there's some novelty and ambiguity and risks associated with design development and procurement of AI. So, uh, so we've written the ethical principles down and they're meant to address this novelty and any concerns the public might have and ensure all DOD is doing the right thing. They've not only been formally and publicly adopted by DOD, but they've also been adopted by uh, many of our allied countries as well, uh, as well as our own intelligence community. So these are foundation, these ethical principles are foundational to DOD's responsible AI strategy. But 
what does really a responsible AI approach mean? When we say we have a responsible AI, what does that really mean? Well, to put it simply, responsible AI is a journey to trust. It's an approach to design, develop, deploy, and use, that, and use the system that ensures the safety of the system uh, and their ethical employment. And, and the, the people using the system, and they're, they're used ethically and employed ethically and, and, work, and work as expected. Responsible AI manifests itself in ethical guidelines, testing standards, accountability checks, employment guidance, human systems integration, and safety considerations, okay? And there are really two aspects of that trust and that journey to trust. Uh, when you're talking about AI. The first, does the public trust the DOD to do the right thing? Okay, and the public trust, you know, that's influenced a lot by uh, Hollywood. You know, it's uh, it's dependent on the gathering. You know, if you go home tonight or you're at a social gathering tonight and you tell people you took a course on AI, I bet you somebody's going to bring up Skynet or, you know, the I'll be back, you know, quote or something. And, you know, that never really gets old. But it has had a big influence on, on uh on public and, and uh, you know, so there's that aspect, gaining and keeping the public's trust. Guidance uh, is, is publicly facing to, to help accomplish that. Okay, and then there's also the aspect of gaining the warfighter's trust. Can the warfighter trust the system? Will it work the way it's supposed to? Is it reliable? Uh, when they pull, go turn to it to use, is it gonna work the way uh, it was intended? And the services are working through all this. At the time of this recording, a glimpse into that progress can be garnered from this report from the Strategic Studies Institute at the Army War College. As always, for further reason, reading, of course, you can look in your guidebook and find the link to this document. And this document uh, reports on a two-year study that explored integrating AI-enhanced targeting and uh, with legacy systems in the Army. And it focused specifically on the problem of trust. It looked at what the military professional needs to know in order to integrate and trust AI. Now, reading it will solidify in one's mind the importance and nuances of complying with those five ethical principles. While on their surface, those five principles seem pretty straightforward, in practice, there can be numerous challenges uh, that the services are currently working through. And the findings in this study stress the importance of understanding in context, you know, how important it is exactly to understand what you are and tr you're, you're trusting that AI to do. Determining how the warfighter will need to interact with the AI system is gonna be key. And, and the findings in this report emphasize how trust, mission success, they all go hand in hand with knowing how to curate and monitor data, knowing how the AI system was trained and retrained on that data, and that accurate and representative data was used in the, in the use cases. And the AI is gonna make mistakes. They, they, they clearly say the AI made mistakes when, it, when the use cases that they use in the real world don't closely resemble that used in training. So knowing that the system has been uh, you know, trained on, on a, a realistic environment that looks uh, a lot like what you're using or knowing when it hasn't might be important too, just as important, even more so important. Uh, and also knowing that the system has been protected from external uh, spoofing, from external uh, influence, you know, as the warfighter probably should suspect, these systems are gonna be under constant attack. So this report also emphasizes AI performance is not all about speed. They found that the idea that effective use of AI means trading human control for speed is not necessarily true. You, know, you think you got to trust over, you know, give control over to the AI in order to gain the speed because the AI makes decisions so much quicker than the human. But they found that to be false. Instead, they found that the AI performs better when the humans interact with the system. And the key to being able to determine when and where the interaction is necessary, that's, how, that's what's going to make it all work in, according to this report. All right, so in the end, it comes down to the warfighter figuring out how best to use the technology to accomplish the mission at hand, as it always has, really. The people need to, to do what the people do best and let the machines do what the machines do best. If you would like to take any of DAU's AI courses and earn credit toward an official AI training credential, click here. Or if the, for whatever reason this link doesn't work, you can find the, the link in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos in this series. And if this helped you out, please like and subscribe.